gonna make a pumpkin flan. And it's kind of like a mashup of pumpkin pie and creme caramel. So I'm gonna start with one can of sweetened condensed milk, one can of evaporated milk, one can of pumpkin. Just make sure it's pumpkin puree, not pumpkin pie filling. They're completely different things, but they come in cans that look very similar. Half a cup of mascarpone. It's gonna make it nice and thick and rich. I'm just gonna whisk all these together. And when it's nice and smooth, I'm gonna add four extra large eggs. Set one teaspoon of vanilla. And I have maple extract, which really kind of boosts the flavor of maple. Half a teaspoon, it's very, very strong. Make sure it's pure maple extract. Okay, one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon, because of course you always have to have cinnamon with pumpkin. And a half. It smells so good. And a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. And the last thing is orange zest. And the zest has more flavor than the juice, so I always use it when I can. Just stir it in. And that's basically the custard. I'm just gonna pour it over the maple caramel that's already in the pan. It's just fantastic. Let me tell you how I made it. It's pretty straightforward. I put three quarters of a cup of sugar in a small saucepan, poured in a third of a cup of pure grade A maple syrup, a third of a cup of water, brought them to a boil, swirling the pan to dissolve the sugar, and cooked the caramel at a low boil without stirring for eight minutes. When the mixture turned golden brown and registered 230 degrees on a candy thermometer, I turned the heat off, swirled in a half a teaspoon of fleur de sel, poured the caramel into the cake pan, and let it cool for 30 minutes. Okay, I'm just gonna pour this mixture on top, and I wanna do it kind of slowly so it doesn't mix in with the caramel. Okay. So now I'm gonna put it in a water bath, which is in a pan. And I'm gonna put water all the way around. Make sure you don't get any water into the flan. And what this does is make sure that the temperature around the custard never gets to be more than 212 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm just using the hottest tap water. Okay, ready for the oven. From here on, it's all about baking and chilling. I'll put the flan in the center of a 350 degree oven for 75 minutes. By then it should be firm, but still slightly jiggly in the middle. And when I put a knife in the center, it should come out clean. Remove the flan from the water bath and put it on a cooling rack. Then when it's completely cool, I'll cover it in plastic wrap and put it in the fridge for at least three hours. So the flan is chilled. And now the moment of high drama when I take it out of the pan. Okay, it's thoroughly chilled, which is great. I'm just gonna run a knife right around the outside. How good does this look? There it is, just like that. Whoa. And the caramel's just gonna go all the way around. I think it needs a little orange zest on top, don't you? Mm. It's so creamy and absolutely delicious. I don't know, I may have to skip the turkey and go directly to dessert. This is fabulous. Dylan's coming all the way out from New York City to show me how she wraps candy as gifts, and I thought, I've gotta do something for her. So I thought, I'm gonna make a big pot of winter squash soup, and I'll send her back with a thermos and some homemade croutons. That'll be good. So to start the soup, I've melted two tablespoons of butter, one tablespoon of oil, and I've added two cups of onions. I'm just gonna cook them over medium-low heat till all that wonderful flavor from the onions comes out. Okay, that's one and a half pounds of butternut squash. Goes right into the pot with the onions. It's a really easy soup to make. Okay, and the next ingredient is pumpkin. 15 ounces of pumpkin puree. Be absolutely sure you're not using pumpkin pie filling, but just pumpkin puree the vegetable. Believe me, it's not only easier, but it's better. Fresh pumpkin actually gets very stringy. Next is three cups of chicken stock. Homemade is always better. You can also buy chicken stock. Choose a really good one. 
And if you want it vegetarian, you can use vegetable stock. But chicken stock really gives it great depth of flavor. Two teaspoons of salt. Now be careful with the salt because the saltiness of the chicken stock really determines how much salt you need. So if you're worried about it, do one teaspoon and then add another teaspoon later. Half a teaspoon of pepper. Give it a big stir. Bring it up to a simmer. Okay, 20 minutes, and then I'm gonna puree the soup and it's gonna be thick and rich and delicious. So I've got a food mill and I'm gonna puree the soup in this and that gives it great texture. Look how gorgeous this is, wow. Okay, so I'm gonna take big ladles of the soup and just put it right through the food mill. Make sure the butternut squash is really tender before you do this. Okay, just puree it like this. You wanna turn it in both directions. One direction purees it and one direction cleans the blade. It's all gorgeous and delicious. <laughs> this looks just great. It's pureed, but it has a lot of texture, which I love. So just stir in a cup of half and half. You can use milk if you like. Mmm, look how gorgeous this is. So the creamy soup and those crisp croutons. So I'm gonna chill this overnight and tomorrow I'm gonna heat it up and pack up all the soup and croutons for Dylan. I hope she loves it. Around the holidays, everybody gets so crazy getting ready for it that we really do forget to have fun. So I decided I'm gonna have a pre-holiday party and show everybody a really good time. I'm gonna make a wonderful dinner and what's for dessert? Not pumpkin pie, pumpkin mousse. So the first thing I need is a cup of Half and half. I'm just gonna pour it into a bowl, set over a pan of hot water. I'm just gonna turn the heat on. I just wanna make sure that the bowl actually is just sitting in it, it's not touching the water. And so it just steams. Otherwise the, the mixture's gonna get too hot. So the next thing I need is a can of pumpkin puree. It's a 29 ounce can. I'm just gonna put it right in. And now I need one and a half teaspoons of salt. And then some classic pumpkin spices, a teaspoon of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of nutmeg, and two cups of brown sugar. I'm just gonna heat it for about four to five minutes until it gets warm to the touch. And then I'm gonna add some egg yolks, and make a custard. So I'm gonna separate six eggs. I must say I'm not a big fan of pumpkin pie. I usually find it sort of cloying and sweet and dense. But I love this pumpkin mousse because it's light and flavorful and has all the holiday flavors like orange and spices. I'm just actually using the yolks, but something tells me I'll be having an egg white omelet for lunch. And just to make sure the egg yolks don't curdle, I'm gonna warm them a little bit with some of the warm mixture. Just put a little of the warm mixture in, mix it in. What it's called is tempering. Just bring the egg yolks up a little bit in temperature and then whisk it right back into the mixture. And then I'm gonna cook it for about three or four minutes until the mixture starts to thicken the way custard would. Great, okay. Next I need some gelatin. So I need a half a cup of cold water. So it's two packets of gelatin. I think they always come in these little packets. Just stir it in. So two ripe bananas, make sure they're ripe. Just mash them on the board. It has such layered flavors. A little bit of molasses from the brown sugar, the banana. I'm gonna put some orange zest in. One of the other good things about this is you can make it way in advance. Really three or four days is just fine. Okay, that's really well mashed. So I'm just gonna put this into the warm pumpkin mixture. Ooh, good and messy. Okay, and the next flavor is one teaspoon of grated orange zest. Okay, so that's about a teaspoon right in. And it looks like the egg yolks have really thickened the pumpkin mixture. I'm gonna add the softened gelatin. 
right into the pumpkin. Just whisk it in. Take it off the heat and let it cool. And I'm gonna whip up two cups of heavy cream. I'm gonna put some of it in the mousse and some of it for the decoration. Half a cup of sugar. Splash of vanilla. It's gonna turn on and whip it. And then I'm gonna mix half of it back into the pumpkin mixture and the other half I'm gonna put into a piping bag. And I always like a nice big piping bag with a star tip like that. Okay. Cream's done. Just want it really firm, but not over whipped. Just take a spatula and fold it in. This is sort of classic folding technique. Have the spatula go right down the middle. Just do it very carefully. Okay, that's good. So now I'm just gonna pour it into a mold. Just pour it right in. This is enough mousse for about eight people. Fill it with whipped cream. Really, all you wanna do is just press evenly on the bag and just keep rolling it around in a circle. Try it out on the board, test whatever you like. It looks difficult and believe me, it's not. Okay, and you always wanna have some pumpkin showing in the middle. And since there's orange in it, I think I'll do a little orange zest decoration. Just gives it a little other texture and it gives people a hint of what's inside. That's that a perfect, easy pumpkin mousse. And they'll always remember what you serve for dessert. This is so wonderful. It's a parfait in a tall glass, and it's got pumpkin mousse and layers of whipped cream and crumbled cookies. It's just delicious. The first thing you need, though, is a quarter of a cup of good dark rum. I love this. It just smells like the Caribbean to me. And what I'm going to do is dissolve one packet of gelatin right into the rum. I'm just going to let that soak for a minute. So first thing I need is one can of pumpkin. It's a 15 ounce can of pumpkin puree. A half a cup of regular sugar. Half a cup of light brown sugar. I need two egg yolks. Two teaspoons of orange zest. I need half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Half a teaspoon of salt. Quarter of a teaspoon of nutmeg. I'm just gonna stir it all together. I had to make a mousse out of it. I'm gonna take the gel and I'm gonna heat it up and then add it back in. So you'll see that it's a little lumpy when it's softened, but when it's dissolved with heat, it's really liquidy. So that's perfect. Okay, so I'm just gonna pour this right into the pumpkin mixture. It's actually great, I can smell the rum when it gets hot. And what this is gonna do is, when it's refrigerated, the pumpkin mousse is gonna set. Just mix it in. Perfect, okay. So I need one and a half cups of heavy cream. You want it to be cold before you start because it'll whip better. Splash of vanilla. Perfect. So I'm just going to take this whipped cream and fold it in to the pumpkin mixture. And that's going to really lighten it and make it sort of light and moussey. Okay. Now the best way to fold something is to put your spatula through the middle and then fold it over and then turn the bowl and fold it over. And that way you don't deflate the cream and you get really light mousse. So the next thing I need to do is make more whipped cream. But this time I want to make sweetened whipped cream. So I'm going to have one cup of cream, doesn't have to be exact, one tablespoon of sugar, and one teaspoon of vanilla. Love good vanilla. I'm just going to whip that up. So again, I don't want to over whip it, otherwise I'll end up with butter. If you have a pastry bag with a round tip, just a plain round tip, or even any kind of a big tip, I'll show you how quickly it goes. 
Just put about a third in the bottom and a little layer of whipped cream. I'm going to have some crumbled ginger cookies. So when you bite into it, you get something that's creamy, something that's smooth, and something that's crunchy. And it looks great too, doesn't it? Now another layer of pumpkin. Now another layer of whipped cream. Just a little bit on top of each one. A little more ginger cookie. The last layer of pumpkin. Well, that worked out perfectly. so everybody knows exactly what's in it. A little ginger cookie decoration on the top. It does not look like a party. So the first thing is half a cup of half and half. And I'm gonna put it into a double boiler. And the next thing is one 15 ounce can of pumpkin puree. I've done this with cooking a pumpkin and pureeing it, or a can of pumpkin puree. And believe me, you can't tell the difference and I can tell you which one's easier. Okay, so that's in. Next ingredient is one cup of brown sugar. And you want this sort of lightly packed. It's how brown sugar is generally measured. Right into the pumpkin. Three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. Half a teaspoon of cinnamon. and a quarter of a teaspoon of nutmeg. So now I'm gonna make the custard. So I've got two egg yolks, and what I wanna do is I wanna warm up the egg yolks a little bit with a pumpkin mixture so I don't end up with scrambled eggs. Just like making a traditional custard. And then pour the whole thing back into the hot pumpkin mixture. See a nice scraper. Just wanna get all of it. And just mix that up. And just cook that for about four or five minutes. So I'm gonna take one package of gelatin and just soften it in a quarter of a cup of cold water. When it's chilled, the egg yolks are gonna help the mousse to set, but the gelatin's gonna help it too. Okay, off the heat. I'm just gonna add these other ingredients. Mashed bananas. and soften gelatin. And the last thing is orange zest. Okay, I'm just gonna stir this up. So while that cools, I'm gonna whip the cream. So put the whipped cream right in the middle. And then with the spatula, I use a rubber spatula, just go straight down through the middle and then fold it over that way straight down through the middle and then right to the bottom of the bowl and then fold it over. Just keep doing that until it's really well mixed. It smells great and the good news about this is you can make it in advance. Leave it in the fridge for a day and then decorate it just before you're going to serve it. It doesn't look half bad, does it? My experience is nobody remembers what they had for dinner but they always remember dessert.